Uh, well, originally, you know, it's always team first, and it's the, probably the greatest team assembled possible. Um, uh, I get to work with wonderful people um, across the board, from Steven Spielberg to Colleen Atwood, Austin Butler, and um, I thought it was about time we told this story, you know, and honor these men that sacrificed themselves for us. Uh, actually, I, I met them at the uh, premiere, uh, John Egan's Daughters, and it was a real surreal moment because I, I felt like I was connected to them and I think they felt like they were connected to me. Um, I didn't meet them before we shot. I don't like to do that, I like to have my own space. Um, but it was a special moment and a moment I'll never forget. And not just them, but also the, uh, uh, the veterans, the veterans that were there. Um, one of them was 95 and one of them was 97. And the 97 year old, year old one joked that the 95 year old was still a kid. You know, and they still have that banter and that, that fun that they, they, they had 70 years before. You know, the truth is uh, what we set out to do was to honor these men and, and tell the story as they lived it, as close, as reality, close to reality as possible. And I think we did that and we didn't glamorize war and we didn't glamorize what these men had to go through for our freedoms. Um, and it was an undertaking for sure. It was uh, to tap into the mindset of people that are watching their friends die left, right and center and um, doing extraordinary things for our freedoms. Uh, it was grueling, but you know, at the same time to get through it, we laugh, right? And uh, I know John Egan had a good time as much as possible. But I, in truth, I think today is probably like the most special moment. We get to watch episode nine all together with an orchestra and uh, we get to feel the music that Blake put together in a wonderful way and uh, it's, uh, it feels like a send off. I mean, there were so many things that drew me to the role from, from day one, from, the, from my experience of watching Band of Brothers as a young, as a young kid and the, the kind of effect it had on me then to the names attached from Steven Spielberg to Tom Hanks to Gary Gertzman to Apple to all the amazing cast. So it was kind of a no-brainer and I was just excited to audition for it in the first place. And then when I got the role, I was over the moon. Um, I didn't know a, a load about the 100th Bomb Group in particular, um, so it was kind of eye-opening and to get thrown into boot camp for, th for two and a half weeks and, and really like learn so many intricate details into what it takes to fly these bombing planes and the different um, jobs like as a mechanic to understand like what the mechanics had to do and what the navigators had to do. I learned so much and throughout the process I'd say more than anything it was really just putting yourself into the shoes of these young men and trying to relate and understand like what you'd fight for and when you were when you're put into that position like how you kind of have to stand up for what's right. I did I was lucky enough to be one of the ones that um, I'd like to say got pretty close with Ken Lemons' family and it initially happened uh, ju just before filming there was like a hundredth bomb group kind of Facebook uh, group and one of my friends sent me a picture of the daughter of Ken Lemons had posted a photo of me saying he's playing my dad how amazing and I reached out to her and we had a really really like great kind of um, dialogue throughout filming where she would send me uh, letters of, from her dad and photos from her dad and kind of just like more than anything the the belief she gave me um, and the support I had get, kind of just made me feel really free to be able to tell his story and to tell their family story. And then when I met them at the premiere, it was like an incredible full circle moment. It was really emotional and to just like meet them and to know that I'd been so close to the story of their father and what he did for, for everyone was, it was, it was incredible. Um, playing Ken Lemons, I realized very quickly that I was uh, very lucky to be telling the story from a different point of view, from the ground crew, from the people that weren't flying the missions, but the people that were working night and day to make sure that these these flying fortresses could fly and could, could get up the next day. And with that comes a kind of different type of um, mentality, like you're losing friends, you're seeing these people come back through trauma and, and tragedy. And although you're not um, directly involved, you're still being affected in a lot of the way. And I, I kind of felt like I was the audience's eyes and that you kind of see um, the story of these pilots through the mechanics. Um, so I really wanted to kind of just to, to bring a kind of sense of uh, groundness to the role and throughout that to show how I, in the book that I wrote, uh, that, that I read that Ken Lemons wrote, he speaks about throughout the war, how he felt he didn't want to get as close to the pilots as the war went on because the, the closer you got to them, the more it hurt when they didn't make it back. It's been amazing. It's been so um, 
just uh, it's been really heartwarming to have people reach out who have had direct family members or friends in in World War Two or in current wars or in, in, in war in general and to be able to tell the, the story of the men that gave their lives and supported the world in a time which it needed that uh, positivity and that belief um, is something that I think it's it's really important it's never been just a series for me it's been about telling this story and to be to really bring it to life yeah What have I learned about myself? Um, I've learned that I don't have air sickness. I think I had to um, I had to, to pretend to have air sickness for a long time. What drew me to the project? I think Steven Spielberg, Gary Gatsman, Tom Hanks, you know, those names really, really drew me to the project. I was a big fan of Band of the Brothers, big fan of the Pacific, so it was a real honor to be a member of the, the third installment telling that story, you know? Yeah, so I didn't actually, uh, I, I tried not to speak to the families before we started filming. And then it was about 30 seconds before the premiere in LA and someone came to me and said, oh, by the way, all of Crosby's kids are here. And I was like, oh, Christ alive. And I met his eldest son and he handed me a whiskey and he said to me, you know, we were told that we didn't think we were going to see our dad on screen, but I feel like I got my father back. And it was such a real sort of homecoming moment. And I thought, you know what, if the critics pan it now, at least I've got a decent, decent seal of approval, you know. Yeah, well, you know, Nate Mann and I worked a lot on sort of going, why are people friends? What, what, like, why do you enjoy someone? And I don't know about you, but for me, it's humor. Like, at most of my friends, I'm friends with them because they make me laugh. And, you know, I thought we, we didn't want to have these guys walk around and just pretend to be so stoic and heroic the whole time. Every time we could sort of try and get a little sense of humor into a scene, Nate and I tried to do that. Yeah, the reaction to the show has been amazing. You know, uh, back in Ireland, people loved it. In America, people loved it. Um, anywhere I've been, people seem to be really big fans of the show. So it's been a, it's been a real honour to be a part of. Well, I learned a lot about the 100th Bomb Group. I'd heard of the 8th Air Force before, but, but not this in depth. Um, and my, actually, my introduction to Rosie was just my first, uh, you know, when I first saw that script. And I just discovered... Who is this guy? I just kept asking, who is this guy? Where's you know, um, and just went so deep into his world um, uh, and was really blown away by him. And that's stuff that that still sort of like sticks around with me. But I had watched Band of Brothers as a kid, right? And of course, in the Pacific, um, and uh, those things, you know, were were were. I think they're formative to a lot of guys on this. Um, and uh, you know, so it, it's it's it feels extra special in that way to have that kind of legacy behind it, and then be able to step in and be a part of it. Dan Rosenthal, so Rosie's son, um, uh, and actually Rosie's grandson Sam. I've got to meet both of them. Um, and Dan is pretty involved in the Hundredth Bomb Group community, and he had you know, and he he loved his dad and had so much. When I first met him uh, over in England, he was there to for some event because they named this plane after Rosie. As like just as it happened, just kind of like a coincidence. And uh, and I met him, and he had he had he just had so much to share, and I could feel like the the, the thing about it that was maybe the most meaningful, right? And the thing that that I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to sort of like take this into this experience of shooting it, was just I felt the kind of like the quality of love for his father, and also having Sam there, right, and having this kind of like generational thing, like this father thing, father son thing, and being there and being able to witness that. Um, was pretty beautiful and also you know I imagine it's pretty odd to meet someone who's gonna portray someone in your family right like if it were me and someone was like you know oh I'm gonna play your dad like it's pretty serious right um, and I imagine pretty strange um, but he was so gracious and so kind uh, and to have his blessing was important to me these men really at the end of the day were, were fighting for each other right I mean you know the, the one it's one thing to get to, to, to enlist, right, and to be part of the to be part of the war and to be part, you know, of, of that uh, that experience. But it's another thing when you're up there and you only have, you know, your your nine other crew members to rely on. So those bonds form in, in such a deep way, right? Because you you have to place this trust in one another. Um, and we because we got to shoot this over a long amount of time, we really got to know each other. Um, and you know, John understood how. Um, as the writer understood how pivotal and how central that, that those bonds were in order to you know make it feel uh, 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 more 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 live more real um, and uh, you know so by the end of it we were all you know as close as could be so many people worked so hard on this and it took it took we really took our time 
um, and what the special effects team was able to pull together and, you know, to be able to, well, I mean, you know, when I first watched it, I, I really was, I, you know, uh, I was blown away by it. And, and, uh, and, and people have, with shows like this, people have, you know, uh, sudden sort of uh, connections to it, to the history, right? Maybe somebody has a, a grandfather who served or a great-grandfather who served. Um, and that's been a really meaningful part of, of, of having this show roll out, is getting to meet people who feel that type of connection. It's, uh, it's rare for a project and, and makes it that much more special to work on. What drew me to the project, I think, um, I feel like it's an actor's dream to kind of anthologize, if that's a word, you know, kind of like a time in history, um, because the, the framework is almost absolute in a way, um, and it gives you so much to play with as an actor because of the specificity. Um, and I think that a story like this also, there hasn't really been enough or a lot of iterations of it told, um, specifically from the perspective um, from the black fighter pilots um, in the United States Air Force during World War II. Um, so I think that was a very um, uh, intriguing and enticing um, thing for me to tackle uh, subject matter wise, creative wise. Um, and just to give justice and um, shed a little more light that hasn't been shed um, on this on this story. I, I respect the people that fought for this country in totality a little more, having more insight into really understanding what it was like as a 19, 20 year old, you know, young man to just put your life on the line with not with real, really no context of what you were like kind of getting yourself into, you know what I'm saying? I feel like today, um, uh, there's so much room in between, I guess, profession, you know, and back then, like, you were drafted, so you didn't have a choice, you know, so people can kind of choose what they want to do today, and back then, it was kind of like this or uh, nothing else, to be honest, uh, so, yeah. I was initially drawn to it because of the telling of black soldiers during World War II. I think that story hasn't been explored enough. And seeing a character, not even a character, a real human being like Alexander Jefferson was just an amazing opportunity to tell some, some real history about gentlemen who were real life heroes. Um, and I think I've, I've learned so much about myself as an artist, as a person, and, and kind of how limitless we all really are. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to meet anyone. Um, it was during COVID, so it was a, a lot harder. But um, I think that would have been, one, really helpful, but also meeting the families afterwards was also just a, a beautiful experience. Um, a lot of them were, were touched by the film, and during the premiere we were able to, I heard actually one was sitting behind me, and he was like, oh, I flew in that plane. And, it, you know, stuff like that is kind of what we do. What we do is to uh, bring these stories to real life so people can connect to them and realize that it wasn't that long ago, and there are people still affected by what happened. and, and because of that, we're able to walk around and, and do and live how we are now. Yeah. The development for me was uh, the book of Alexander Jefferson. Uh, and reading that, I was able to gather so much about him as a human, him as a person. Um, I was able to see his heroism. Uh, I mean, his words were amazing, but also he was an artist. So I was able to visually see what he saw. He was a very talented artist at that. And um, because of that, we're able to see more of the POW camp. We're able to see and understand a little more of the black soldiers' experience. And I think they, they used a lot of that in the show as well. And I think without that, it would be a big gap and a big, uh, really, misunderstanding of what was really happening. So I, I was really grateful to have that as part of not only my character development, but the, the show's development of it as a whole. Overwhelming. Definitely overwhelming. Um, you never know what you're really getting into when you do these things. You, you just do the job and hope for the best. But I think we've gotten a lot of really good feedback. And it's been, it's been really nice to be able to go on this roller coaster because we, we shot it so long ago as well. So to, for it to still last and, and be going on has, has been amazing. And people have been overwhelmingly supportive. And being able to go to a couple of military bases as well and see the support of servicemen and women, it's been, it's been really nice. Well, the research journey was, was long, but we had a lot of good sources in the, in fact, because there were real photographs of the guys in the bases at the time period. So I found 
antique jackets and copied them and manufactured them for the show and then added to them and aged them and broke them down and resourced all the materials for them. Well, it's interesting. They are in a uniform, and like kids you see at school, it's a military uniform, but everybody personalizes it. So some guys had silk scarves, some guys had great watches, goggles, glasses. So in doing that, we sort of be we sort of backed into the looks of the original guys and made each person individualized through the glasses and stuff and how they the attitude in which they wore their costumes was had a lot to do with it and we had such amazing cast they all kind of had they kind of all had a signature and you came in and you just sort of knew what to do with them most importantly since we have been a part of the this is a trilogy obviously band of brothers and the pacific so we stayed true to the period it's very important all the research we did and also to pull out some of the fun copyrights that really haven't been utilized um, during you know the time period that haven't seen the light of day that was our biggest joy really well, Rachel and I always love putting together a fabulous playlist just for us and to brainstorm. Our creative brainstorm is always the best part. And to really dig deep and to also um, coordinate with musicologists on it to make sure that everything, all the on-camera performances by the cast were very attuned to make it absolutely specifically correct. It was, yeah, finding those like gems and like doing your proper history to make sure that like we're clearing songs that are accurate to the time period. Yes, we were able to find some deep cuts and you know, some of these songs were like probably the first time they've been licensed in a really long time and us tracking down licensors since probably, you know, the first time since they've been written, yeah. Well, you know, we had done Band of Brothers and The Pacific and uh, Steven Spielberg's father always thought that we should uh, take on the war in Europe and it's an air war uh, that we're talking about with the 101st Squadron and uh, the technology wasn't really there plus we didn't know exactly the story we wanted to tell exactly and then Don Miller wrote a book called Masters of the Air and it inspired uh, John Orloff and people we love to write uh, this epic so that's how it happened. Oh, great. Um, we worked with John before, and he was on Band of Brothers, and uh, we're, we have a very good working relationship with him. And we're telling a true story. So, you know, it's really kind of fell off the bone in some ways. Well, I hope they realize we're trying to honor these heroes and, uh, and appreciate the uh, dedication that 19-year-old boys had rolling over there and women. But the people in the air, it, uh, it's quite an amazing feat what they did and what they pulled off. And they truly helped us win the war in Europe. I just love when people are inspired by anything that, uh, that we do. And that's really the biggest joy of all of it is if they're moved by it. And, and it reminds them of things they remembered before, if that's their age group. And if it inspires them to do great things with their lives, no matter what they do. Uh, that that's the that's the great part of it. The very first time I met with the producers, I was given my orders of authenticity and heroism. So that was our goal all along: it was to create a soundtrack, including the B-17. It had to have uh, a lot of personality, and and uh, and just show how heroic these men were to be doing what they're doing. It's, it's hard to, to really focus on any one of those because I'm focusing on all of them at the same time. Every second, it's changing. It could be the dialogue that's carrying the emotion. It could be the music, and it can be the sound effect. And sound effects can have a lot of emotion in them, and they have to be correct. And they have to complement the, the music and the dialogue. So it's a, it's a ballet all the way through. We have listened to recordings. There are historical recordings. Uh, and I've seen a lot of other movies, and so you just, I take those as a lead and uh, follow them and take me where I emotionally want to go with that. Dramatically, um, I just take my resources and make it better. 
Well, I actually got my start from the composer Michael Kamen of Band of Brothers. He's, he gave me my whole start. He's my mentor. I was an orchestrator on that project. And then years later, we did the Pacific with Hans Zimmer and Jeff Zanelli. Um, and for this one, I really wanted to do it myself. I said, Gary, I, I have to finish this out. Um, and I felt like this one needed to have a bit more heroicism in the music. Um, not that the Army and Marines aren't heroic, but these guys, just what they did to save the world is incredible. Yeah, I wanted the main title to be very noble, but then I really was trying to have this sense of flying towards the end. Um, it builds a sense of flying, and that's why I call it Soar. One of the hardest scenes I did was the uh, discovery you'll see this afternoon of the concentration camp. And that was one of the hardest things that I scored. But, um, you know, you just try to support and let the music just supports and gives you a tone and let the acting do what they do.